Y'all, I'm probably breaking all COVID protocol. I am such a hugger. So I got to actually do better with that. Saying, Is that okay? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Thank Melissa. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's such a beautiful setting. My goodness. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Well, that is thanks to the Google and YouTube team. Thank you all so much. They have said this facility is everything. It's, it's so beautiful. beautiful. And welcoming to great, a great team and, and staff making it all come together. Absolutely. Thank you. When I think, when I, when we were thinking about sustainability and the brands we wanted to have on, Lim Lim was one of the brands that I was like, we have to have someone from Lim Lim on um, because you've been doing this work for so long. I have some pieces from Lim Lim and um, not only is it a sustainable brand, but also the pieces are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So first start out by telling us your role <laughs> with the brand. Sure. And we'll go from there. Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, we're so pleased to be here. Thank you so much for thinking of us and having us with you. Um, I've been working at Lem Lem for, I think, around nine or ten years now. Um, and I came on Lem Lem um, to set up its foundation. Okay. Um, and then my role evolved and I took on different sustainability aspects of our work as well. So uh, I think Lem Lem is, is, a, is a very unique brand that actually started in order to address a sustainability challenge. Um, and our founder, Leah Cabetti, who sends her regards and, uh, to, to all, uh, her, her story and, and w when she talks about why Lem Lem started, she always says, I didn't set out to have a brand. But I saw a challenge in, in, my, in my hometown, in my community, that I, I wanted to address in some way, push the needle some way. Um, and the brand was a way to do that. So um, uh, Leah grew up in Ethiopia. She went back to her hometown and saw what was happening in the local market there to traditional weavers who, were, who have, uh, you know, for centuries been working in the art of hand weaving and creating um, creating garments that um, people in Ethiopia used to wear every day, um, but less and less as the, the global market changes. And they were losing jobs um, and losing livelihoods, uh, and that art form was dying out. And so she saw Lem Lem as a way to connect um, the beauty of their craft and their skill set to the international market um, and, and create and shape the design in a way that, that made it very much accessible around the world. That's the, the founding story of the brand, and, and that uh, emphasis on the makers has always been the core of the brand. I love that. I love that. Um, now, what's Lim Lim's approach? Well, what is her approach to sustainability, mm -hmm. right? So where are the fibers coming from? Where is she get, you know, where are they getting the fabrics from to actually create the garments? We think of that of sustainability as this holistic strategy and, and um, I think that's that's one thing that um, we always try and emphasize until in, in how we portray the brand as well right. that there is this focus on the people right. um, but the materials are, are equally important to us as well so uh, we look at each of those uh, I'm going to call them levers in the sustainability process in a different way. And, and we're very much kind of centered around um, the weavers and, and their environment and their uh, livelihoods. How could we make sure that they're um, able to build a sustainable livelihood with a living like, wage? That's how we started the day off. You know that? Exactly. We started today on exactly. talking about let's sustain people first. Exactly, right? okay. exactly. But then this environmental footprint is equally important in making sure that um, the materials and the, the sources that we use are, are responsible. Um, so um, it's a unique uh, brand in the sense that we work with a, a, a workshop of weavers in Ethiopia that actually make the fabric. Um, and it's such a fascinating process to see how uh, a bowl of cotton becomes uh, the yarn and then is spun and then woven into these beautiful panels of fabric that are then in turn made into the garments. Um, so we have this, uh, this kind of vertical process in a way, but in a very kind of hand, uh, hand spun way. Uh, and we're able to see that kind of step by step. Um, and one of the things that we've looked at and tried to concentrate on over the years is how can we make sure that um, the design process, uh, you know, really honors the 
the, the fabric itself and there's less waste and we find ways to repurpose it and we think about um, how it's cut to, to make sure that the patterns are, are created in a way that um, uh, uses most of this beautiful fabric that they're creating. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you talked about you started with the foundation part of it. That's right. And I know that there's like what, 5%, I believe, of the profits from the brand go back to the foundation. Can you tell us a little bit about the foundation? Mm -hmm. So the foundation is, is uh, the foundation and the brand are, you know, sisters that sit side by side right. and support one another. And we saw it as a way we saw the foundation as a way to really leverage a different type of resource to help communities along our supply chain. Um, so the foundation concentrates on, you know, what can we do to support uh, better access to services for the communities that, that make the brand, that, um, that we care about, and uh, we focus our programming in a couple of areas. We started with a focus on maternal health, wanting to support moms that are, you know, working moms in, in East Africa to really have better access to care and education uh, about pregnancy. Um, and then over the last, uh, around five years now, we started an artisan training program directly um, with our the key workshop that makes Lem Lem um, as a way to, to um, you know, bring more people into, into that workforce, right. train them in the technical skills, um, and especially bring more women in. In Ethiopia, weaving is very much the, a man's domain, um, but it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a good quality job, and we saw this as an interesting way to support um, an apprenticeship in a way, where you learn on the job, you gain those skills, and then you transition into the workshop uh, um, as part of a class and a family, kind of a, a supportive community. Um, so we've been trying to expand that program every year, adding different kind of uh, different types of weaving training and sewing training, and uh, using it as a way not only to bring people on but to upskill uh, staff uh, at the at the workshop. Um, and we've been really interested in hoping to kind of continue building an upcycling component to it as well. So how can we take um, you know damaged fabric or a fabric that didn't quite meet the quality control and and drive it back? into the process of, of uh, training materials and or repurposing and thinking about a kind of new beautiful Lemlem products that we could put out there. I love that. How, how can we in this room support the Lemlem Foundation? Well, you can definitely make a donation, which we always love and encourage <laughs> on our website. Um, but I think, you know, um, get to know the brand and learn about us, get excited about our story, pass it on, um, get excited about, um, Fashion in Africa, which is one thing that's really important to us. Right. We think, uh, you know, you think of, of the beautiful uh, processes that go into couture fabric and the fashion houses in Europe, um, but there's just as uh, incredible skill all around the world in Latin America, in Africa, um, and uh, we're we're so passionate and we love it, uh, and we hope you do too, and would be interested in kind of getting to know the stories of the the people and their craftsmanship. Was there a time for you personally when there was, you know, an encounter with one of the women um, who's actually making the product that really drew you more into the brand? Absolutely. I love, like, my favorite thing about the work is going to the workshop and getting to know uh, the, the, the women and men who are involved. It's a beautiful kind of lively spot. It's a women-owned workshop. There's this energy to it that's really infectious and infectious in a good way. <laughs> I feel like we can't say that anymore. Uh, and um, all of their stories are amazing, but um, when we first started the artisan training program, we had a class of women come in, and our focus really was um, giving them a place that they could kind of you know, form a life in Ethiopia and not have to leave to, to find employment out of the country, not have to migrate, not have to um, you know, make a choice that, that would take them away from their families. Um, and I think I was most... Um, captured by, by their stories. They're just, you know, what kind of brought them into the program and, and then watching how they um, helped one another and, you know, came to love what they were doing and get excited about learning how to, how to make the, the products and, you know, kind of carry forward and have that pride and confidence uh, as they spent more time with, with, the, with the workshop and with the brand. Love that. I would love to see it. Come at and point. come anytime. <laughs> um, as a brand, it's growing, and you know, there's also so many technological advances. 
How is the brand thinking about how you move forward with sustainability? Mm -hmm. um, we've been we've been adding some some different things. The, the you know the heart of the brand is hand woven, so it's it's not a high tech process. It's they right. they work on traditional looms, and that's that's what makes it extra special. Um, but we also have lines that are made um, with more traditional uh, workshops and factories in in Kenya, and we started a swimwear collection, um, which is made in Morocco. Um, and did that, that did that launch? It launched um, two years ago now, yes, um, okay. and you know, please go online and check them out. See, tell us what you think. Okay. Um, and we're excited about, um, especially in that swimwear collection, um, you know, piloting use of new fabric. So one thing we did was try an, uh, a, a green swimsuit using a fabric called Reprieve, which is made from um, plastic bottles. Um, and what you know, more and more, fabric? it's called the fabric itself is called Reprieve. Okay. Um, and we were excited to to look at the at, at how that that fabric could be kind of integrated into our swimwear collection and, and, to, and to spur our thinking about um, how we might kind of continue you know, innovating in, in our processes as well. I love that. I don't know if I had ever heard of that fabric, but now I have to go yeah, in. Yeah, check it out. Check it out. Um, what are some changes that you think other brands can make just to become more sustainable? I think um, sometimes it can seem overwhelming. So I think it's to, to, to narrow it down and right. say, you know, what do I care the most about? Or maybe reverse the question and like, what, what can I do quickest? Or what can I, you know, what is, what is that one element that I can focus in on that I have the people and resources to, to tackle um, right now? Um, and take it step by step. Because really the sustainability is more than, uh, you know, it is this kind of all-inclusive concept, but um, sometimes it's just a matter of diving into kind of one piece of it. One thing we're doing right now is, is going through this impact assessment um, for B Corporation certification and using a, a free tool that, that, that's online um, to go through and, and assess ourselves and kind of what we're missing in our processes, what's strong in our processes, and um, we've learned a lot in that. Um, and so I, I think that's a, a kind of a unique way for small brands in, in particular to, to start thinking about the different areas. And um, and then I think talk to your peers, bring people together, right. start a B Corp support group or <laughs> a way to share kind of tools and resources yeah. um, and uh, kind of find out what others are doing and uh, tools that, you know, no, they're not necessarily proprietary. They're things that can be shared. You know, what are your best practices in different governance policies and, and in how you work with the communities along your supply chain that, that might kind of relate to one another. So um, that's, that's, that I encourage. We, we also worked with a few bigger brands and through collaborations and got to know a lot more about how they were looking at sustainability issues and, and the tools and, and resources. And they were very, often very generous in, in supporting our foundation. So um, that's another way to think about your kind of collaboration strategy as well. I love that. I was thinking, um, as you were talking about the fact that you guys were like self-assessing and self-evaluating, uh, what is it, it's a B Corp evaluation? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, we should do that at HFR, even this event, we had all these plans to print all of these things out, right? We were gonna print out a separate fee, we were gonna print out programs for all of you, we were gonna print out all the, and then, you know, my team came to the space and we're like, this is a sustainability summit, why are we, and, and this space, you know, again, thank you to Google, I don't know where Corey is, but, um, you know, this space allows for a fully sustainable event. So mm -hmm. I'm really proud to say for this event, we haven't printed out a thing and that everything is digital, which um, it should be <laughs> for, for, exactly. for this type of summit. So I think the idea of saying, let me self-assess, mm -hmm. let me, and that's something we can all do if it's a free tool, right? We exactly. can all self-assess and say, how are we doing? How is our department doing? It doesn't even have to be at a company level. So thank and you then so set small that. goals too. So it's, it's not um, that everything has to be done in a day. It's taking it step by step and 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 thinking about um, you know what you can put forward every day. Absolutely. Well, Melissa, please give Leah Cabet our will. best I honor will. her last year um, at our Fashion Show and Style Awards. We're so excited to have had you here. Thank, thank you. you. And please stick around. I but, will. But thank you so much. Please join me and give Melissa a huge. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you.